please welcome to the stage, Dr. Matt Turek. Good afternoon. I'm Matt Turek, Deputy Director for the Information Innovation Office at DARPA. So today I'm going to tell you about a capability that can help protect individuals against video deepfakes. The capability was developed on DARPA's Semantic Forensics or Semaphore program. That's a large research program that's been creating foundational technologies to help offset the malicious use of manipulated media. Now probably most of us have heard about deepfakes. Those are videos or other media that have been altered using AI and machine learning techniques. The term deepfakes originated in 2017 in a Reddit thread where a developer released software that used machine learning techniques to automatically replace a face in video. That software and other variants have been widely used to create manipulated videos for entertainment purposes, like this one where Sylvester Stallone has been swapped into the movie Home Alone. Now, deepfake technology continues to advance. It's primarily driven by the gaming and entertainment industries. This deepfake roundtable video shows a much more compelling capability and alters multiple individuals in a video. This video is longer than the previous one. It has multiple shots and multiple camera angles. The actors are moving much more quickly and their heads are seen from multiple perspectives. All of those factors make this video much more difficult to create than the previous one, and that requires more time and more resources. Now, videos like the one we just saw rely on actors that have similar facial structure and are talented enough to mimic the mannerisms and the voice of the target. That adds significantly to the realism. And again, while automated deepfake tools continue to advance, the results still generally require manual edits to make the most compelling effects. So if you look closely at the images here, you can see some of the artifacts that might get introduced in the manipulation process, particularly around the eyeglasses. Now I showed you many entertaining deep fakes. Other uses are much more serious. On March 16th of this year, this video of President Zelensky was posted on several online forums and called for Ukrainian troops to lay down their arms. Prior to this video being released on the TV station Ukraine 24, their ticker was hacked to display the fact that President Zelensky was urging Ukrainians to stop fighting. Now the video was quickly debunked and correctly identified as a low quality deepfake, but it illustrates some of the challenges of manipulated media. This video is probably the first use of deepfakes in the context of war. And if it had been more compelling, it might have changed the trajectory of the Russia-Ukraine conflict. To illustrate the pace at which deepfake technology can be utilized, here's another manipulated video from the Russia-Ukraine conflict. This video was released less than a day after the Zelensky video, and again, posted in online forums. And this time, the target was Vladimir Putin. In the video, Putin appears to say, we've managed to reach peace with Ukraine, and goes on to announce the restoration of Crimea inside of Ukraine. A tweet sharing the video with a caption in Ukrainian reads in translation, the president of the Russian Federation announced the surrender of Russia. Russian soldier, drop your weapons and go home while you're alive. Again, this video was quickly debunked, this time primarily due to the lack of corroboration from other Russian sources. And the video likely leveraged an address that President Putin gave in February of this year. There are several techniques used for generating deepfake videos, and new approaches are constantly being developed. So here are a few sample frames from a pristine video in the first row and four different techniques that have been studied in Semaphore's research. In lip sync, a new audio track is used in the video and only the pixels around the mouth are digitally altered to synchronize with the audio track. 
in face swap, the face of the person in the source video is replaced with the image of uh, the target in the deep fake. Again, that alters this region of the face. The audio track, the facial expressions, mouth and head movements, the backgrounds all preserved in the context of face swap. Puppeteering is an even more sophisticated approach where another video is used to drive the facial expressions of the target in the deep fake video. And lastly, what we've shown here is frames from an impersonator video. These ones may not have any digital manipulations, and I'll show you in detail another example next. So here's an example where a professional impersonator is pretending to be former President Obama. Now, if you build defenses that rely on simply digital signatures of manipulations, they'll fail to detect these impersonator cases. However, the approaches that we're developing on the semaphore program rely on building soft biometric models and can catch both this case and the digital manipulations. The soft biometric approaches build a model of an individual's behavior from known good data. So how does that work? The soft biometric approach starts with algorithms that can automatically identify facial landmarks and from those landmarks what's called facial action units. Facial action units are collections of muscles in the face that lead to, exp lead to expressions. Some examples are the eyebrow raiser, the lip corner puller, and the nose wrinkler. These action unit values, along with head and mouth movement, are built into a machine learning framework that creates a face and head movement model unique to a particular individual. It requires about 10 hours worth of training video to build these soft biometric models. That makes the approach viable for high profile individuals like senior leaders where a lot of high quality video data is available. And due to the individual nature of these muscle movements, they're extremely hard to fake, even for a professional impersonator. The defensive model, again, is robust to a wide variety of manipulation techniques like those that I showed previously. And again, it can detect impersonator footage where no digital manipulation has occurred. The models are used to automatically compare the movement patterns for the real individual against a suspect video. So using that research foundation, Semaphore performers developed a tool that can analyze videos of targeted individuals. Here's the tool in action on a clip of a deep fake from former President Obama that was created by the actor Jordan Peele. The algorithm correctly detects this video as a deep fake as indicated by the low integrity score shown in the top right of the video, yielding the very likely manipulated finding for this video. Now here's that same President Obama impersonator that I mentioned earlier. So this video is of an impersonator, not a deep fake. One advantage of our approach, other, uh, unlike other deep fake forensics, is that it's able to flag this video accurately with a low integrity score, indicating that this is not President Obama, even though there is no digital man, uh, manipulations. So here's an example of a pristine video with no manipulations, and the system detects it correctly with the high integrity score, again in the upper right-hand corner. The user can also view some of the evidence that the algorithm has generated in the process. So first, the analyst can verify that the system has detected the facial landmarks as expected, and then they can analyze the graph at the bottom that shows the analysis of a window of frames throughout the video. Now, this is a much more dynamic video of President Zelensky. We're developing additional tools to help analysts dig into the foundational details of what an algorithm sees, particularly in challenging cases. So here, again, there's a more animated style of speaking with a lot of head movement. What you're seeing on the right-hand side is a visualization of the action units that shows the strength of their behavior for different parts of the face. A future version of the defensive tool will also highlight the action units that contributed most to the algorithm's decision, 
This provides some explainability to a human analyst. On this manipulated video, the algorithm has a low integrity score, again, correctly predicting that the video was manipulated. And furthermore, the tool can highlight the facial action units where the behavior of the face is inconsistent with the real individual. In this case, there are four pairs of action units that are not consistent with the real President Zelensky. So deepfake technology will continue to advance for the foreseeable future. Our focus is on outpacing those evolving threats. The defenses that we're building using semantic technology can help offset media manipulations and bolster national security. I'd like to say thank you to the Semaphore research team, in particular Kitware Inc., the University of California Berkeley, and Pinscreen for the research results I've shown today. But that entire research performer base is particularly dedicated to building defenses against manipulated media. We should all say thank you to them because we're all safer as a result. Thanks for your time.